In this video, I want to show you how to extend Vim's functionality to include some amazing features like auto completion with AI, that's right, we're talking about Copilot, and session management with auto session. Seriously, check this out. When I open up NeoVim from my terminal, I'm immediately dropped into a session that I was previously in based on this directory. It's amazing. I can also switch my sessions using Telescope just like this. And we also added Copilot. So if I open up a JavaScript project and navigate to a JavaScript file, when I enter a new line in input mode, Copilot is going to guess what I want to type next. I love Copilot. I love auto session. Let's get into it. Our course NeoVim for Noobs has far exceeded my expectations. We had a lot of fun making that course and it's always awesome to see just the amazing outpouring of support in YouTube comments or in Twitter mentions. All that stuff is really amazing and I love seeing it. And a special thank you to our members, the Typecraft gang. You know who you are. Thanks nerds. Now I see NeoVim for Noobs as sort of a course that teaches the fundamentals of how to configure NeoVim for your needs and then you can extend that for yourselves. So we've been reading your comments and taking notes and we're gonna be doing a monthly series where we answer some of your questions about NeoVim and add a couple new plugins to our configuration that you guys have mentioned. So the first plugin we wanna talk about is GitHub Copilot. Now GitHub Copilot was one of the most requested plugins from all of your comments and I gotta tell you, I love it. I use it every day in my day-to-day -day workflow and I think it's amazing. So let me show you how to install it and how I use it. It's pretty simple. We can just go to the repository right here. For installing, it's pretty straightforward. We just want to copy the short URL from Git and we open up our NeoVim config. Now I view GitHub Copilot as a completion source because essentially that's what it does. It auto completes something based on the AI output of everything it sees around it in its context. So I'm gonna add this to our completions.lua configuration file. We just wanna add another table and the short URL for GitHub Copilot.vim. We can write that file and then that's about it. We can quit and reload NeoVim. Copilot gets installed with Lazy and that's about all it takes to install it. We can go back to the repository to check out how to actually initialize GitHub Copilot. And we can see down here, after you install it, you can start NeoVim and invoke Copilot Setup. So that's what we'll do. Copilot Setup. Authenticated as GitHub user CPOW. What does that mean? Well, I have already authenticated Copilot in my GitHub profile. If you haven't already done that, you can just go to github.com, click on your profile icon up here, click on your Copilot, and on this page is where you would see how to sign up for Copilot if you haven't already signed up. I already have an active Copilot subscription. You can see it right here on this page. If I didn't, it would prompt me to sign up for Copilot. This is where you would do it. I believe it's $10 a month right now. Personally, I find that it's very useful and I pay for it, but that's up to you to decide. And once you've signed up, it'll give you all the instructions. Now, if you weren't already authenticated, which I am, it would have opened up Chrome and had you sign into GitHub. And then it would authenticate you, I believe through a node process that will then store some kind of credential or token. And that'll be a long lived token. So you're not going to be authenticating yourself every single day. That'd be ridiculous. But either way, that's all you have to do to install Copilot. You're kind of all set. Let me show you how it works really quick. Now I could show you this in my NeoVim configuration, how it works, but it's a little bit more impressive to do it in maybe a JavaScript project. So that's where I'm going to go. So let's go to a component. Now with GitHub Copilot, as soon as you enter in insert mode, it's going to try and guess based on the context of the file, what you're trying to type next. So if I enter a new line and start typing a new element in this JSX file, it's going to guess based on the context of everything around it, my next completion. If you hit tab, it'll complete what Copilot has guessed. Otherwise you can hit escape or just keep typing and Copilot won't do anything. Personally, I think Copilot's really cool. I think it's awesome, especially when there's some kind of syntax that you don't really know of, or at the very least, you kind of forgot how it works. Like, let's do a map right here. So I type something.map. Copilot is already guessing the thing I want to type next. So if I hit tab, it's item and index. And if I hit enter, it still doesn't really know what I want to do, but it's going to guess like, oh, key, index, and item. That's pretty cool. And if it's not exactly what I want, but it's somewhere close, I can then go ahead and edit it from here. This is kind of how I use Copilot a lot. It's, it gives you an idea of what you want to do. And if it's the correct idea, you can just sort of edit it from there. It's pretty awesome. Speaking of GitHub Copilot, language models lately have just exploded with things like Copilot and ChatGPT, not even mentioning the open source alternatives and platforms like Hugging Face. 
It truly is a new era of technology for programmers. But if you want to understand more how to use these technologies, take a look at this video sponsor, Brilliant. From an intro to large language models to tokenization, you'll pull back the curtain on what's powering the hottest new tech. This isn't your typical quiz format. These interactive lessons help you learn visually, keeping things fun and still challenging. And by learning foundational concepts, you can develop a firm grasp on how these building blocks make things like GitHub Copilot possible. But it's not just language models. Maybe you're early on in your career in software development and you want to learn more about different data structures, pointers, linked lists, whatever. Brilliant covers the spectrum from beginner to advanced. The best part is the whole experience is tailored to you. Brilliant meets you where you are and helps you level up. And as a part of sponsoring this video, Brilliant is giving the Typecraft community a sweet deal. You want 30 days free? You got it. And if you're on the first 200 signups for an annual plan, you'll score 20% off. Off. So go to brilliant.org slash typecraft and snag a free 30 days for Brilliant. And again, for the first 200 who sign up for an annual plan, you'll get 20% off. Check it out. Now, the next plugin I want to talk about is Auto Session. Session management in general was something that was requested a lot in our videos. And so I wanted to at least go over one plugin to show you how it works. Now, I don't think I would use this in my day to day workflow because I tend to use Tmux, and Tmux has a lot of tools around sessions itself, but it is a cool tool, and I'll show you how to install it and get a little bit of extra functionality out of it. Now, Auto Session is pretty neat. It automatically creates a new session based on your current working directory. When you go into a directory and open NeoVim, this plugin will then save a session of your current open buffers and windows when you exit so that the next time you open NeoVim, it'll automatically plop you right into that session as long as you're in that same working directory. If you go to a different working directory, it will create a new session for you. It kind of works like magic. It's pretty cool though. Let me show you. So we can just scroll down to this installation section, copy this GitHub short URL here. Let's go into our NeoVim configuration and let's add a new file called sessions.lua. Inside of here, we want to return a single table and and this table is going to at first just contain the GitHub short URL of this plugin. And then we can type config and look, Autopilot is guessing a lot of stuff here. This is actually kind of cool. And this is a really interesting use case for Copilot. Now Copilot has a lot of the documentation for auto session stored in its model. And so it knows based on the fact that I am trying to install auto session in NeoVim, what the config function could look like. Now I do not need this whole entire thing. So I'm gonna kind of ignore GitHub uh, Copilot for now, but I'm just gonna keep typing. So function end. And within here, I think I just want to do require. I'm going to check this out again, but it's probably require auto session. Let's see if GitHub Copilot has something to say about it. Yep. Require auto session dot setup. Now I don't need all of this stuff. So I'm going to delete this and just call setup. Good to go. So now I'll exit Vim again, reopen it and I'm plopped right into the session that I was in before. Pretty cool. Now, if I open a different file, like my sessions.lua file, and then quit, when I reopen NeoVim, it should give me that file back again because that's where my session left off. And there it is. That's how auto session works. It works automatically. But there's a little something cooler you can do here. You can actually configure it with Telescope. And this configuration will allow you to use Telescope to browse the sessions that are currently open. This is a pretty cool thing too. I also see here that there's some directories that you want to suppress with auto session. I think that's a good setting. So I'm going to add that to our setup right here. Pretty cool. Now to add the telescope stuff, it looks like you add the session lens section of the configuration. This used to be a separate plugin, but now it's integrated with auto session. We can copy and paste this right here, reformat the file, delete this comment. And then for our key map, we can copy and paste the key map right below this section. And let's change this from control S, let's call it leader LS. This will list all of our current sessions. So let's write and quit. Let's reload NeoVim and let's type leader LS. Okay, cool. So these are all the sessions that are stored on my machine. And if I go to any of these sessions and hit enter, I am dropped into the last session I was in there. That's pretty cool. Now, if I want to go back to my config, we're back in our config. That's pretty neat. That's how I would get auto sessions set up and running. So for you guys who ask the questions about session management, I hope this was helpful for you. So let's talk about one more plugin here. This one was requested a lot as well. We're talking about LSP configuration using LSP zero, as opposed to the way we did it in the 
NovaVim for noobs, which is a little bit more manual. Let's look at it. If we look at LSP0, it's kind of a starting point that gives us a good base configuration to use LSPs in NeoVim. And essentially it tells you right here, out of the box, it will help you integrate NVim CMP and NVim LSP config. So a minimal config can look like this. That's pretty cool. But within the question about LSP0 was automatically installing LSPs, I can show you how to do that. In our configuration, I have an LSP config file, and this is essentially how it works. We have mason.mvim, which is something you would still need even if you had LSP0, because mason is the thing that installs the language servers onto your machine. We have mason LSP config, which is something that enables better communication between mason and the LSP configuration. And then we have this NeoVim NVim LSP config package. Now, this is the thing that LSP0 would replace the most of. It automatically gives you key bindings and it sort of takes away the need to do all of this extra setup here. But if you want to automatically install your language servers, this is all you need right here. At Mason LSP config, you have ops auto install set to true. That will automatically install your LSP as soon as you encounter a file that NeoVim doesn't have an LSP for. So I hope this is all helpful. If you like this NeoVim setup and you didn't check out NeoVim for noobs yet, make sure to subscribe and check out that whole playlist. It's great. We cover configuring NeoVim from scratch with all the plugins that you've seen here. But other than that, thanks nerds.